Hi everybody and welcome back to California Native Plants and Plant Communities. Each week starting in week two during the first half of this semester we're going to be looking at one or more of the main plant communities in Santa Cruz County. This unit gives you an overview of what plant communities are. Later in the semester, you'll learn how a knowledge of plant communities can be used to select appropriate plants for cultivated landscapes that include California natives. By the end of this unit, you'll be able to define plant community or vegetation type and list the main plant communities or veg vegetation types in California. In the previous unit, you learned that there are three floristic provinces in California, the California Floristic Province, the Desert and the Great Basin Floristic Provinces. You also heard that within these floristic provinces, the type of plants or vegetation can vary, sometimes dramatically within short distances. One of the concepts used by ecologists to classify these changing patterns of vegetation is that of plant communities. Plant communities are repeatable assemblages or combinations of plants that grow together because of similar adaptations to complex interactions between the abiotic and biotic factors in a particular location. Abiotic means non-living and in biology, horticulture and agriculture refers to factors such as climate, which includes wind, precipitation and temperature, and geology, which also includes soils. Biotic means living, and biotic factors in ecology include interactions between living organisms such as fungi, bacteria, animals, and plants. In horticulture, damage to a plant caused by abiotic factors might include overwatering, underwatering, frost damage, Exposure, exposure to too much sun or a nutrient deficiency. Damage caused by biotic factors might include insect damage, fungal, bacterial and viral disease. The term plant community implies an emphasis on plants, but let's remember that vegetation forms habitat for micro and macro fauna so a more holistic approach is to think of plant communities as the plant component of ecosystems. An ecosystem can be described as a biological community of interacting organisms and their physical environment that together form a functional unit. Plant communities or vegetation types can be defined on a broad scale or refined to be more locally or regionally specific. On a broad scale, the most common plant communities in California are chaparral, scrub, grassland, woodland, forest, and wetlands. With the exception of wetlands, these designations are based on aspects of the general physiognomy of the plants in the plant community. Physiognomy refers to the general appearance of the dominant plants in the community. In this respect, grassland, woodland, and forest are probably self-explanatory. In scrub plant communities, the dominant plants are low growing shrubs that usually grow to less than around six feet tall. The word scrub is derived from an Old English or Northern European word for shrub. Chaparral is the plant community that's characteristic of Mediterranean type climates. In Chile, it's referred to as matorral, in Australia as mali, in the Cape of South Africa, it's feinbos, and in the Mediterranean basin, it's called garig. The distinctive plants and chaparral plant communities in all five of the Mediterranean type climate regions are relatively large evergreen shrubs with sclerophyll foliage and relatively little understory. Sclerophyll means hard leaves and refers to the tough, thick, leathery leaves of these shrubs. The word is derived from the Greek sclero, meaning hard, and phil, meaning leaf. The species composition of all of these plant communities may vary from location to location, 
but the general appearance of the plants and the community in general remains similar. The broadly defined plant communities that were mentioned on the previous slide can be further re refined using their dominant plants, their plant types or the region. For example, forest can be refined or subdivided into coast redwood forest or mixed evergreen forest. Wetlands can be further categorized to include communities such as riparian woodland, freshwater marsh and saltwater marsh. Scrub is usually refined according to its biogeographic region, and so we have coastal scrub and desert scrub. Plant communities aren't static and they can change over time. Their species composition may change, or there may even be a transition from one plant community to a completely different one. These changes are often caused by a disturbance event, such as fire, flood, disease, or a change in grazing practices. For example, historically, coastal prairie plant communities were dominated by grasses, sedges, and herbaceous annuals and perennials. Few of the plants are taller than one foot, and the composition of the community was maintained by grazing animals such as deer and tule elk, and by fire. In the absence of fire and grazing, though, coastal prairie can quickly convert to coastal scrub. When you have a good vantage point and can look across a natural space, you can often identify the different plant communities from afar by the general appearance of the plant assemblages. For example, take a look at this photo that was taken at Reinhardt Redwood Park in Oakland in the East Bay. So from this vantage point here, we can clearly see some of the different plant communities in this landscape. We can see coastal prairie here in the, in the foreground, and you can see it being invaded on the right here by some scrubby shrubs. If we look a little further into the photo, we can see an area through here of coastal scrub. We've got more grassland on this rocky outcrop here. And if we want to be a little more specific, this is actually serpentine grassland because of the geology of the rocks in this area. And then going over to the ridge in the top left hand corner here, we can see the start of Coast Redwood Forest. So from a distance, it can look as if there's a very clear delineation between the edges or the margins of these different plant communities. But if we were to walk closer in to this landscape here in the East Bay, we'd see that those margins aren't clearly defined. The plant composition doesn't change abruptly from one plant community to the next. Rather, there's a region of transition where the plant composition includes plants from both plant communities. This area of transition is referred to as an ecotone. Finally, let's look very quickly and extremely briefly at Santa Cruz County. The county is dominated by forests and woodlands where the common trees include evergreens such as coast live oak and tan oak, coast redwood, Douglas fir, bay laurel and madrone and deciduous tree species such as western sycamore, big leaf maple, box elder, cottonwood, alder and willows. But we also have a wide range of non-forested and non-wooded plant communities that include coastal bluffs and dunes, coastal prairie, maritime chaparral, wetlands, mountain meadows and our endemic sand hills. Over the first half of the semester, we'll be looking at these local plant communities in more detail. We'll look at their main plants, the fauna they support, discuss threats to these ecosystems, and talk about ways in which we can draw inspiration from these natural systems for our cultivated landscapes. That's the end of this unit. Now head back to Canvas to finish the lecture component of this module.